sit here and have a two hour conversation with you just about this chart right here. I uh, thought it was interesting that uh, uh, as the breadth indicator was getting completely washed out, we were dumping down into previous lows, which I think is actually what you're going to see uh, if you study this over time is, uh, I mean, we all know, right? Who can answer the question? Uh, who is it that's actually buying up here? We know that institutions buy down markets, buy down markets. So by definition, that means that they sell up markets. And the public is usually the people that are coming in and buying here. And now that you have this tool, make use of it. If you see that the breadth indicator looks like this, just cool your jets. You just, you don't have to go charging in. So at the same time too, though, you have to look at this indicator and go, actually, if I really did want to buy, well, now's the time when I got to start paying attention. So it really shouldn't surprise us that here we are, price is now back down to the bottom end of the range. And of course, you know, institutional players buy down markets. The public sells down markets. So what do you think the rhetoric on social media is? going through this what do you think the rhetoric is on you know public discord channels and stuff probably pretty negative that in itself should actually help a little bit there's no guarantees in this business one thing i will say that i really like about julian's approach and i do see this more and more on the site is uh it's cool brian's got his uh, two to ones and he's gonna take his big fat w's oh there's a big fat w and so i gotta risk all the way down to the bottom and that means a two to one all right i gotta be thinking uh, up in this area which makes sense it is a 50 percent retracement off of uh uh this sell-off and there's also a pretty significant uh high to uh low trend line here boobity boobity boo a little bit off but anyway high to low i think that's a pretty significant level so could we come back and tag that again sure not unrealistic you can see there's a couple uptrend lines that are going to provide resistance uh, there is a downtrend line that's going to provide resistance there is the original market structure top the big old fat m up there that's going to provide resistance Oh, gee whiz, we got a couple big fat 877 foggies up here that could get traded to. So this is not an unrealistic objective. It's perfectly realistic. Half of your job as a trader is just to try and identify those areas where, you know, actually seeing a move back to 50% level is very realistic. There's no reason after this W has come in that you can't, and this is exactly what we teach you in the education program, let the rally happen and then just draw a reload zone off of that range. You've heard Brian go on endlessly about candle body lows for trade location. Uh, if I do come in down here, I am buying a down market. Oh, I like that. Institutional players buy down markets. Also, too, this is super cool. If I change this to a line chart, oh, there's a W there. And notice, look at that W actually is the same level as... That's 78.6 area. Now, this is interesting. On a clothesline, it actually went a bit lower. So, you know, you might look at that and go, eh, Brian, I don't know, there's the W, or, you know, this is a bigger W based on uh, the actual tails. I, I, you know, whether you wait for this W to come in, then you buy me, you know, that's up to you. I mean, it's really all about your personal temperament. Um, the point I'm just trying to say here is we had come down into an interesting level we're just above the reload zone. Came back down into this original W. And this original W is actually like the megaphone breakout level. We had a number of different uh, all trend lines and stuff all sort of come to a head right in this area. So I guess it didn't surprise me too much 
that we come down into this original buying area and we're going to find some support. Wouldn't even be surprised if you see the amount of volatility here, right down all the way up there, all the way down there. I would not be surprised if this is the kind of volatility that we have to expect right in this area. It's not going to be easy. In fact, they're probably going to make this as difficult as possible. So, you know, what, there's a couple of things that lead me to believe that this was a half decent trade to take. Like I said, um, I actually really liked seeing the way that this bottom had come in. They put in this kind of funny sloppy W over here. They rallied it up. Then they brought the market right back down against those lows. Candle body lows for trade location. All you badass traders, you're all hunting that level there. But maybe that was a little bit early because this W was a bit sloppy. Well, look at that. Boom, boom, boom. There's one of Brian's crazy inside bars. And I guess because the candle body is entirely inside this candle, even though the tail's sticking out, so I don't really like this, but... Japanese can call that harami. I don't really like that talk, but I can call that a bull rami. But it is a three-bar fractal, right? And actually, the three-bar fractal is that bar, that bar, and that bar. The harami level would be, I guess, the breakout of the candle baby's uh, head, I guess. There, that would have been a darn difficult trade to take. But nonetheless, I do like the fractal level. Boom, boom, boom. And notice the fractal level is actually basically the same as that double bottom level. Oh, do you think that's a coincidence? I don't. Point here is 78.6. You know, Brian likes that. And then, of course, like we said, candle body lows. Brian loves that. Talk about a level. Are you a trader? You know, like if I was a lower time frame trader trading the corn, that to me looks like a hell of a level. And this is sort of the kind of situation where, like I said earlier, I could have bought this big W or even this W. And then, you know, two to ones uh, on our sort of test of this area up top here. Okay, that's fine. But if we had just slowed down through this, let the market rally. Interesting how we banged up against 2.618 off of this range. Theoretically, if this is a normal foggy, we top out and we should come back down and kiss this breakout level and i think that's basically what that was but if you had just drawn the fib off of here and said you know candle body lows original w original uh, fractal bottom uh 78.6 i'm gonna throw my bid in here uh, uh, there's lots of reasons you got lots of location reasons you could have maybe even you know i know uh, guys like to trade like 15 minute charts on the site just ask do we have any signs of divergence coming into these levels and you can see it looks like, uh, you know, you could have bought that level there. Or notice the market made a lower low here, but yeah, no lower low there. Look at that RSI dip. Ooh, wee, that's sexy sex. Williams percentage are nice and stupid. You can even see the bears falling asleep here. Yeah, bull's waking up a little bit there. Maybe that's your killer W off the 15-minute chart. Eh, point here is that actually looked like a pretty damn good-looking trade location. So uh, up goes the market. It's interesting how uh, this, I think, even happened. Well, I guess that was through uh, yesterday. I had the market coming off here through this morning's New York kill zone. <clears throat> and I did see some people sort of commenting, gee whiz, this kind of looks like uh, this could turn into a head and shoulders. There's the New York kill zone. Don't quite have three lower highs to work with. And then I'd also say, you know, like off of these lower time frame charts, I probably want to see uh, market structure below this trend line. That's a dangerous trade to take. I would have liked to have seen a nice M come in on the other side of this. 
And then I noticed, you know, again, right through that sort of London kill zone or New York kill zone, right at the very end of the kill zone there, seven, eight o'clock, right in there, big rally up. Boom. So I guess the way that I'm looking at this right now is it looks to me like somebody is trying to come in and defend a, a, a trade down in here. I really wouldn't have a problem if somebody uh, did want to come in here. You know what now? So those are the bullish sort of uh, conversation. And then, you know, you had your breadth indicator all washed out. It looked like it was trending higher yesterday. You might even argue that the double bottom coming out of here, this is a pretty good example, especially sort of like through right through here, that weak buy signals. And sure enough, yeah, we rallied up into foggy. Then we had to come back down this morning. The weak buy signal, it still looks like it's legit. So if you had even bought that W there and risked against that low or bought this huge W here and risked against that low, nothing's changed. So I guess the way I'm looking at this right now is eh, the longs were given an entry here. Um, as I had said earlier, for the people that are, we're on now on a 15 minute chart. So this is definitely not little old lady. This isn't even really Joe six pack. This is kind of like Paul. And, uh, if we were in the day trader room, that's exactly what that trade is in my eyes. And as I said, if you can have the balls just to risk against these lows, and then we uh, just have the tenacity to hold out for uh, fog and bombs to the upside, uh, tags of 50% rules, high to low trend lines, I think you can actually squeak out a pretty half decent trade, 6.78 to 1 risk reward off that 78.6. You don't have to be that right that often to be a, a very profitable trader at those kind of numbers. Do you want to maybe at this point, and you can see what I've written here, is I think it's a good idea if you are a day trader. Now, this is pretty damn high octane, so I might even say, you know, at, at two to one, take some money off the table. But I would definitely say if this thing does rally up and we break up through the top here, be a very good idea for you to move your stop to scratch, and then that way you don't have a winning trade turn into a losing trade. That's just, it's good best practices. Now, let's say you didn't even get into the trade. Let's say you missed the trade. And you're like, Brian, you know, breadth indicator is trying to turn back up. Uh, looks like uh, market is feeling a little bit better. We've got the holiday weekend. Maybe they're going to rally the market through the weekend bring it uh, maybe back up into resistance. And then as soon as uh, the, the adults come back after the holiday weekend, down she goes again. Could be. So what do I do now? Well, I like the idea that there is your fib now, uh, uh, our tool, just exactly as we did this. We're going to simply drag the market, uh, the FIB tool up as we go. That's the recent high there. And lo and behold, if this is the high and we start pulling back, notice the long entry isn't a hell of a lot of difference than where this guy's long. I mean, what is that? That's a difference, uh, 39.7, 39.8. It's difference a hundred bucks, you know, on a $40,000 asset. It's almost the same level. Do you think that's an accident? I don't. This is the level. So if the public wants to dump and the institutions want to buy the down market, they want to buy the public's dump, well, they'll dump it down into these levels and do it all over again. It's very normal. Based on what I saw here, and if we draw our little foggy buggies going back off that range, back up there, because that's a WA down, up, down, breakout. 2.618, what a surprise. We run into chaos up here, stalled out. You could probably also make the argument that this is probably like a 50% retracement of this range. So could we see the same thing? Notice down, up, market goes and puts in a big fat W here. So um, 
down, up, down, breakout. We broke up through the top. So if that's the case, then we should just, just like we did here, to draw a foggy boggy. Foggy boggies. What this is basically saying is we're going to go back up and test the top end of the range. What a surprise. Wicks and tails like to be eaten. You can see there's a whole bunch of trapped bulls. If we get back up in there, they'll desperately want to get the hell out up there. Uh, candle body eyes. And really, you might even argue that if this is a top, where's the M? Well, you can see there's an M right there. Up, down, up, fail. And you could also argue up, down, up, fail. That's an M. So that's pretty good looking rally window. There's a low to high trend line as well. Boom, boom, boom. So that's pretty good level. What a surprise. There's 2.618 sitting right there off of that. And then also, too, what this probably is, is um, if I go uh, A, B, C, D. Yeah, that'll take us up into that level as well. You know, L, yeah, if you're like a total junkie and you just got to trade because, hey, man, I'm a trader, man. Got to trade, got to trade. It's what I do. I'm the boss. You might even be hunting little trend continuation setups, little bot setups just right in this formation to take you up top there. Seems logical. So based on that, what I've sort of suggested here is Maybe just, you know, you could hunt the long to try and get in on this. Or why don't we expect that the market's going to hit foggy boggy? And then, of course, what should we expect following foggy boggies uh, levels is we should expect a pullback, just like we saw here, pullback to test the original breakout level. And maybe even do a reload zone off of this range. And notice, like I said there a moment ago, 78.6 off of that range. Candle body lows for trade location. Not a bad level. Look how close all of these buys are. So ironically enough, the buying window really doesn't change a hell of a lot with all of this back and forth, back and forth.